Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Legendary Rianshu campaign. This is episode 11. We pick it up from turn 48 in the winter season of 199. So last episode, uh, we ended as we start to invade the south. Uh, Zhou Tai has captured uh, Kuai Zi's livestock farm right here. And uh, Yan Baihu has declared war on us. He's in a coalition with Sun Ce. So unlikely allies is filled in this campaign. We are friends with Liu Chong. And Cao Cao was friends with Tao Qian, and now Sun Ce and Yan Bai Hu are friends. The people who historically killed each other are just best buds now in this game, as we have completely altered the historical timeline playing as Yuan Shu here. So our plan here in our newly captured territory is to convert it over to a Han version, just because we can't do much with the bandit version here. So that would just be a conversion of one turn. And we'll just keep launching attacks from this location uh, into his other territories. I don't know where his army is, and um, I don't really care, honestly. Uh, we want to eventually wrap our war around to Liu Yao as well, wipe him out here, uh, capture basically all of the south. Now our other army has to kind of respond to the situation over here. Chen Pu is in the waters. Um, I don't know where he's headed. He could come back and attack the trade port, it's likely. And we would just end up losing it, which would be really sad, actually. Hmm. I don't know if he's actually going to go for the trade port or the city. Hmm. We're getting 10% extra mustering rate right now. And if we move, it'll take us about three turns to get here. We can't save this, it's too late for that. If we lose it, we just have to grab it back. I'm just debating about this uh, construction here. We could cancel it, get the cash back. We did that with the Jade Mine, it backfired, but this clearly looks dangerous. Hmm. All right, I think this is the safer thing to do. Just cancel it for now, waste two turns of construction. Um, it's unfortunate, but it'll be fine. Um, we won't move. I think we'll stay flexible here. We'll just have this army continue to run over there. Uh, they can't take it in one turn because they have no siege weapons, so I'm not too concerned here. Uh, the Assassin Corp will continue to go over here and wipe out Yan Baihu's territory in the north here, or north of the Yangtze River. And we'll just wrap up our turn with some builds. So Jiangling here is going to be a food and commerce build. So I think we'll add in the M building. And we, yeah, that's good. Yangxia is pretty much full build. And Nanyang here is missing. What is it missing here? I mean, the fourth building could definitely be a marketplace building. It's viable. Or do we have any missions here? Do not be a war with Odai. We're going to wipe him out. We have another army going towards him. That's not happening. Ah, move any character to Donghai Fishing Port. We can do that this turn. Let's get that out of the way. Let's see. We have Dongzhuo's wife now in our faction. Mm, not super useful, but... I guess we could, I guess we'll just go for a free version. Because, you know, we're cheap like that. And then we can recall him right after. There we go. He's good. So there's no real building mission. So I guess we'll just build this correctly. We'll get the Jade Mine. Oh, we're trying to wait for this one. We want more commerce. Marketplace is really a late game building. Like once this is a tall build, it makes more sense to go marketplace or else we can only upgrade to tier three. So I guess forge would make more sense right here because we can get a tier two forge, get a little bit of industry income boost. 20% is not bad. 20% is like the same as the level four private workshop. And we also can get buildings once we get to level two. So I think that's what we're going to do. All right, we're going to get more food here in Pengcheng and Runan's fine. Get level 2 forge here in Xiangyang. Yeah, we cancel that. Can't do anything about that. I think we're good. Uh, we can take a look at any potential turncoats. Mm, 
Not really. And the one we have here that we're trying to reduce Lady Ben to join our side, 38. We have to hit their whole faction first. But I think there's a plus five defense on the cover, so we can't do it now. We could get this in first, but then... Yeah, I think the smart thing to do is actually just wait two turns, let him have enough points so we can do both on the same turn. And this way we can guarantee uh, her to lose 40 points total. That way we can grab her. That's the only character we really care about. Everyone else is... Well, yeah now, but he's too happy right now to even consider leaving. Alright, so I think that wraps everything. This army is getting closer to Intron's farmland, and that's all. I don't think we need to worry about anything else. This is the army that's concerning me, but we'll see what happens. Let's end turn. Oh, Lady Me had enough. Has returned to war uh, with us, uh, with her lonely army on the field. Alright, so they didn't attack us, so we canceled for nothing again, but Sun Tzu's going there, so I guess he will try to take it. Gong Sun Zan requests Liu Chuan to join their war against Gong Sun Du. Who cares? Now, is it that hard to not get killed? Not kill uh, Lady Mi. Ooh, we received the from the Emperor the Nine Bestowment. So this is the highest honor sort of the Emperor could grant us. Basically, it allows us to have a certain tier of wagon and horse, clothing, armed guards, written music, a ramp, a red door, arms, bows, uh, arrows, axe, wine. So these nine things, basically. So basically, you can have fancier version of them. Basically, one tier below the emperor, and it's pretty much the highest honor you could get. But most people who has ambition to become the emperor will grant themselves the nine bestowment, and it's pretty much a prelude to becoming your emperor yourself. Uh, so it's really up to no good. But we're getting this from the emperor himself, so we must be a very good boy here. Friendly trait gained. Because obviously we have uh, no ambitions to become Emperor. I mean, we're 200 prestige points away. So that's actually still quite a bit. Uh, we need to capture more territory. So Trimple's army went this way, which is interesting. So they're coming after a level 1 trade port, uh, fishing port that's about to hit level 2. We could make a stand, perhaps? It's not impossible for us to fight this. Hmm, but it's not likely we'll get an easy win out of it. So over here we have a level up on Ventral. Now I'm interested in getting his unique ability, so we'll go consideration. And now this army is ready to move. They're fully healed. Uh, we could come and defend the trade port, because I actually value it quite a bit. So... If we march... How far can we go? Oh, no, no, no. Let's get into the water first. It's definitely faster in the water. Okay. Not this turn, right? Yeah, next turn. That's good enough. Because I think he's on march right now. I don't think he can actually reach it if he's not on march. And I guess we wasted two turns. Actually, three turns. Now we consider it. Um, But that's totally fine. Better safe than sorry. Seems like... They're going to be fine. The problem is this fishing port. Um, Yan Bai Hu is right here. We could just... Hmm. Should we let him take it? That's the other question. Yan Bai Hu owns this too. I don't think we can trade it away to anyone. Or oh, maybe we can trade it away to the High Empire. And get another territory back. Let's see if that works out. Uh, but if we're going to do that... Actually, let's see if we can do that first. If we're going to do that, we're going to cancel the build. Oh. Uh, it's possible. It's actually worth quite a bit. Okay. So if that's the case, then I'm okay with losing it. The fishing port's really no good until you get the tier 5 uh, reform so we're gonna come here we're gonna utilize the fact that we still own it right now to recruit back our assassin's corp oh they don't get along anymore what happened I thought they were very happy with each other before but guess not and uh, they can definitely march this is gonna be a free take it should be a level 1 yep we should be good and we can now sell this. 
Now the question is, what do we want back? Ooh, Badong Lumberyard. And have Liu Bao as our neighbor down there. Guangling's trade port. That's actually a pretty good uh, trade. Trade port for a fishing port. I'll take that deal anytime. The small city here. So we can do a small city lumberyard. That's not bad. Ooh. If we can trade for Shang Yong, we can eventually trade for the weapon craftsman. This might be the best deal here. It might cost us an arm and a leg. Ooh, more than an arm and a leg. Let's see here. Hmm. We can just pay him in cash for 15 points. And then what? Oh, man. That might not work. I don't want to give that many items away. What else can he give me? I mean, he's going to value all his territory quite a bit. I don't know. He just doesn't have... Do I have another trade capital? I, I, maybe I can sell him something else alongside that. Like, honestly... I can sell all of Donghai. I really don't need it. I can sell both of them to High Empire. Like Peng Chong we need for a little bit of food and a little bit of temple. Hold on, let me evaluate what am I doing here. We're upgrading the state workshop. For adjacency bonus. I don't know if we're ever going to mess with it, but that's the thing. We could cancel, save money, trade both. Oh, but in separate deals. First get Shang Yong and then get Shang Yong's weapon craftsman. It's gonna be better than owning this. It's giving us eleven food. And the fishing port is giving us two food. So we'll be down thirteen food. We'll get a town that we can build food production in because this is actually a peasantry town. Okay, I think that I think my mind's made. We're gonna go for that deal. Sun Tzu is kind of pushing us in that direction, anyways. So we're gonna go give out this, and we're gonna give out another fishing port. All this food donation to the High Empire, and we just want a small town, very very small town, and we'll pay the rest in cash. Very expensive deal here, but I think it's gonna be worth it. Alright, 8,000 on top of two commanderies for one. Let's see. No, we're not done here. I'm gonna give him the rest of Dong uh, Hai. Dong Hai right here. And I want the weapon craftsman. Perfect. And it's actually a positive deal, which is nice. So we can get a little bit of gold. Oh, maybe cash, because he actually has a lot of cash. Oh, he is stingy. He, he hates us, basically. Huh. Man, do I just want to give him some... Oh, man. It looks like we're going to just give him some free points. Like, he's super stingy. We're not going to get a cent out of him. Oh, well. We get the weapon craftsman. I'm not complaining. Okay, so we get this chunk of land here. He gets this piece right here. Uh, which is nice, I think. I don't mind having High Empire control this. Because eventually it's going to be all ours. They're a pushover. So we can make them as strong as we want. Alright, we're down to two food. So let's look at this new commandery we got. Oh my god. How did they build this thing? All right, we'll upgrade that. Don't need that. We're going to go for food build here. All right, Simon's not meant for this, but we got ourselves a weapon craftsman. Oh, Domin expanded quite far. Okay. We did all of this. It's Liu Dai's turn to lose. Uh, maybe we actually do need this farmland now for some extra food. But this is also very dangerous for us to hold. Much easier if we give it to Liu Chong. 
Maybe just a trade. Like that farmland for this farmland. Hmm. He's not going to trade it directly, but... Close defeat. Close defeat. Really? Why? Alright, guess we have to fight it. Give Lildai a proper death. He has quite a few good items. We want him to route if he doesn't have um, Unbreakable. So let's go. Alrighty, we're loaded up in here. Um, pretty standard map for, you know, farmland fight. Good weather. Um, we're gonna try to take advantage of this piece of uh, farm here and the river and the or lake, pond, whatever you want to call that. And we're just gonna put our siege weapon right off the pond. Give them fire shots. There we go. Um... I think we'll actually stack them in front this time. Fire arrows all the way. Our makeshift front line. They're gonna defend against cavalry. And we're probably gonna loop from this side. Call these one, call these two. We can probably just distract them a little bit here. She can stay in the back. In case they loop like crazy, or actually, we can do something like this. So if the cavalry charges our sword unit, this will stop their charge. Oh, Willing Duelist. Well, he does have um, a good ability, but I think... Hmm... Ooh, that Wisdom of the River here. If we could draw him out for a duel, what are they doing? Oh, they don't see us? They're scouting? No way. They'll see us soon enough. I think I can beat him head to head. We have a weapon. It's not that we don't have a weapon. But maybe we'll wait. We'll draw the duel when he's closer. We'll just wait for our formation. That way we can get this area effect on top of him. Because right now, if she wants to use it, she has to be in combat. And it's going to be very hard to pull off. Alright, we're just going to lead them over. They see the cavalry. So they're kind of responding to them. Maybe a little too much. I want them to follow me. I'm important. I'm important. All right, all right, they see they see the trebuchets. I mean, if they're gonna loop with them, then go for it. We'll let the trebuchets do damage to just these units real quick. I don't mind. Eventually, they realize they have to come back here. Actually, we'll loop from the top here. Hold on. Are they actually going to catch us? Ooh, free units right there. Alright, stop firing for a little bit. Don't waste all your ammo on these guys. Alright, free kill right here. 95 speed, 94 speed. A little awkward. Turn around a little. Maybe get it ready for a reverse charge if there's no archers coming. Okay, I think we got a possibility of a reverse charge right here. Three on one. Let's get a flank. There we go. Alright, we should make short work of that. Oh, gotta pull them back. Start firing again. Alright. Make sure they route completely. He doesn't have unbreakable, so that's good. Alright, we'll pick off the archer there, and then we'll be on our way. I think we got them completely routed. Yep, white flag on. Kite the enemy. 
We'll run back to our fire puddle here. All right, now their units are slowly trinkering over. Beat us in that line, please. Light it up. And then we're gonna run through it. Because we're crazy like that. Kind of want to draw him closer. Here comes Archers. Shred Shot Cavalry. Alright, if this is the case, Archers do really, really poorly against me uh, melee cap, so we can actually do that. Alright, beat them back. Let's see if we can pull him over here. Alright, let's see this charge. Let's get them. Oh. Alright, I think we distracted him, which is what we want to do with this unit right here. Although he has slowed us down, which is not good. We're going to come here, kill this archer. Alright, they're not going to make it to the front here. Ooh, alright. Let's focus fire that guy down. Time to pull him away. Chase. I'm going to finish him off. I want to try to get them. Alright, I think we we can take him down without dueling. We'll just use our cavalry. I'll we'll have to use him to kill the range units. We still have ammo, so we're still firing at them. Hmm, we're not really doing any damage to his health. Still at 20k. Melee evasion too high. Give up. No point to force it. Yeah, he barely lost a thousand there. Alright, let's see if we can do a charge damage on him. That might be better. Alright, siege weapons running out of ammo. That's fine. They're mainly running out of men as well. Alright, let's try again. He's at what tier on this? Tier 1. Okay, it reset for him. If we click like crazy, 18k. All right, maybe he'll just lose enough morale to route because they don't have any units left. Oh, she bumped in. She's gone. We want him to route because we want his items. We'll charge that. All right, let's do a little bit more damage on him. Are we still on our horse? Yes, we are. All right, let's keep charging. There's another unit here. All right, he's gone. I think if we just charge it, he routes this very low morale here. Alright, we lost our mount, but that's totally fine. Because I think they're going to lose their morale here. If not, we have our cavalry coming. Oh, come on. How did they bounce back? That should be a considered rear charge. Cavalry. Right, that's got to be a rear charge. There we go. That did the trick. What about them? 
Melee cav go. Shot cav. Alright, they're done. We won. Victory, please. Alright, so I wonder if this counts as no longer at war with Liu Dai. Because technically we're no longer at war with him. Yeah, it did count. Good. Good, good, good. We didn't capture any of the generals, didn't get any of the items, so that's a little sad. But Lord Jun here finally picks up Fist of the Righteous. So we reduce the enemy melee evasion and armor by 50% each, as well as 2.2k splash damage. So I think as these MTU characters, you know, gain level, they become stronger and stronger as they pick up these, you know, powerful, unique abilities. We're getting there with these characters. Uh, we want Sound of Ice. So these is, is active ability, uh, 50 range, 60 second cooldown. First five seconds, you lose speed and melee attack rate. And then for phase two, you have... 25 seconds of melee evasion boost, melee attack rate boost, 25% speed boost, 10% decrease cooldown ability. Okay, so it's a interesting way to use this ability. You gotta time it, but it should be pretty useful. Level 3 farm, so we get some food back. That's nice. Our army down south. Now, we don't know where Yan Baihu keeps his force. Now, conservatively, we can come down here, clear the coastline, but I'd rather not. I'd rather go for his cities here. Uh, it's going to be difficult to travel here. We have to go through this. It's going to be like two turns. The Lumbiar here might be faster. Yeah. We're basically going to lose a lot of replenishment either way. So I think this might be better. Hold here and then just cut through this way next turn. That way we at least get one more turn of replenishment. Because we're not reaching anything anytime soon. Upgrade this just to make it a little bit more defensible. They moved, they moved, we traded that away. We're coming to defend the trade port, coming to defend the city. Alright, buildings. Well, first reforms actually. That could unlock more buildings. So we got ourselves Onyx Dragons. Perfect. That changes a lot of things because now. Every group can have an Onyx Dragon. Well, we might want to recruit the next turn so that we can get the mustering bonus inside the city. We can give him a few other characters to round out his army. I will do this next turn. There's no need to do it this turn. They can't recruit in the water, sadly. Um, we can recruit, and we probably will. Oh, she also has Axe. Okay, so we can get rid of this Archer Militia. Okay, hold on. We do the swap with the Archer Militia so the Onyx Dragon can get full health faster. And I'm going to go with a Heavy Crossbowman as well because she's hit rank 6 which allows her to recruit Heavy Crossbowmen. And that should round up this range army quite nicely here. She also, okay so rank 6 also means we can recruit Warrior of the Left. Okay, we should definitely get one of those. There's re no reason to refuse these extra units since we're playing with one of each unit type type of rules here. And this army's actually did its duty, so perfect time for them to get some new units. Uh, she actually just hit rank three, so she can actually grab that for the first time. Need more frontline units, shielded infantry. So I think we, the solution is for them to hit rank six, so you get the greater shield guard. Uh, so level is what we need. Nanyang. Forge goes up. And we're actually out of money because we actually spend a ton of money uh, securing the weapon craftsman and the town here. Uh, that's totally fine. We'll bounce back. Our economy is doing okay. And, you know, fighting all basically generate lots of gold. So let's continue. Alrighty, new turn. Gong Sun Zhang requests Zhang to join. So Gong Sun Du is getting picked on by everyone. He steal with Dong Min. Got a horse. Got another huge list of characters, none of which we're really interested in. Um, quick scan for items, I guess, from the bottom. Ooh, bronze spear, not really interested in that. 
with silver, it's a different story. We're getting ourselves some weapon craftsmen, so we're gonna be fine. We can invoke council again. That's not happening, so we aborted that one. Grain storage, okay. We could build this in Shangyong and just destroy afterward. Get a spy in Domin's faction. Grand Director, that's what I've been waiting for. And then the drone. So who do we want here? Hmm. Preferably a strategist, just to round out the possible mission types. Uh, who actually has a good bonus? Uh, it's mainly spying bonus. Plus 5% from all sorts. That's not bad. We could consider him. Wait, shouldn't it be Guo Jia? He's our Prime Minister. Right, he's even more important. Um... Zhao Hong's also mainly spying. Plus five diplomatic relationship with all factions. That's pretty good. I mean, we're not activating this now. I realize that, but I'm thinking ahead to when we become emperor, who's going to, you know, hold that position permanently. Well, he's actually angry with us, so if we give him a court position, he'll be happier. Hmm, that's I don't think that's the solution here. I think the solution is us just giving him summon him onto the field or give him something to do. Trungong leveled up. Hmm. Ulin leveled up. He's doing assignments for us. We kinda want this for more assignments options from him. All right, maybe we need to just summon Dashu out onto the field because we do need an army slot here. All right, we're gonna pop over here. Give ourselves Onyx dragons. All right, Dashu works well here, and Guosi for front line. So this would be like a range-heavy army with a minimum front line, just because he can't recruit that many units. Um, we'll swap for that. We'll give him this as well. And he can recruit both of the cavalry for the team as well. And then over here, we're out of money. We're just going to keep... Oh, right. Can we actually... Are we allowed to duplicate... Alright, maybe we'll just split him into a separate army, right? If we can't do it that way. Because technically we can't repeat units in the same army, so we can't repeat unit on him as well. Alright, so let's get rid of these. So this is a reasonable recruitment. And then we'll put him in a different army. There we go. Alright, that's just the current setup here. They land. Wait, we were on march? I did not want to st- Ah, uh, we should have switched- Hmm. Too late for that now. I don't think he's dumb enough to attack. I think he knows he can't win. Now the question is, can we switch from March to Ambush? No, we can't. Alright, then we're just stuck with this situation. Alright, let's look at our other armies. We're going to take the Lumber Yard. Should be a free take, hopefully with Delegate. Save us some time. Yep, looks like a safe take. Ooh, still 169. That's still pretty high. Okay. I don't want to decrease recruitment because I don't really care about the population. It will grow eventually. No need to rush it. Alright, convert that. Rest up for some replenishment. Ah, finally see their army. Okay, so they're over here. 
I actually... Like, is the safer approach to not upgrade these? Let them take it as we move forward? Because I'm more interested in these land rather than these land. So we can just let them take it, technically. Alright, we're gonna fight this and cut it out. Save us a little bit of time. Pretty simple fight with our poison volley here. See you guys at the end. Alright, nice easy win for us. Now sadly our two other characters are not leveling up, so we only have one set of poison arrow to work with. Uh, but they'll get there eventually. So we got ourselves another bandit. We're gonna convert that over. Uh, it's a shame we didn't get to switch stances here. That's going to be pretty important, actually. Oh, we have tons of boost here. Let's boost some industry, I guess. Alright, we want the T version. And... Out here, I think, food first. Oh, we're pretty much out of money. Okay, that's fine. What do we want to do with this army here now that they're done conquering here? We could go north and fight Yuan Shao, but I really see no reason to do so. Like, I'd rather them fight each other up here. Um, we can't completely just move out of the north because that's dangerous. I think we'll move them back to Nayang, actually. Just feel safer here. Defend something that's more valuable to us anyways. He should bounce back. We summoned him onto the field. He shouldn't have this item, even though it's giving him some satisfaction. Ah, fine. He can keep it for now, then. Turncoats? Especially Domin's faction, since now we have a mission for that. Not available. He saved up enough points. It's time to put those to work. So, ooh. She bounced back. She lost some lack of purpose. That's not good. So first we want to discredit the whole faction. She won't, ooh, she's not a viable target. Okay, so we can't actually get her. That's not good. I mean, we still want to discredit faction. Like, who can we use it on? It's gotta be someone. Alright, you're the winner here. Plus seven, plus zero. Okay, good to know. So we can definitely compound this. She's... I don't know, is she available target now? No. Yuan is not available either. Oh, a lot of them are super angry after that minus 10. Okay, he's going to have some court problems. We could just make him leave. Yeah, why not? Let him lose a general. All right, that's all. Let's uh, end turn and continue this here. All right, Yuan Shao is actually willing to pay us this time. So our patience is paid off, our dear brother, after randomly declaring war against us, is now willing to be our... Oh, peace out. He's not willing to be our anything. Come on, support a brother. Oh, he has an armor. Uh, it's going to be worth a lot, but, but, yeah, maybe just pay him for turn. He's pretty rich. All right, that's fine. Nobody likes this. Yeah, he's attacking us. We are on March, so we're weaker here than we should have been. Uh, we're going to have to fight this. That's going to be our 
regular defense of the Changsha trade port will do fine. His troops are rather fresh and green. All tier 1. No weapons. Okay, so Sun Tzu is pretty loaded. None of our generals are going to be a direct match for him. So we have to probably not fight him in a duel. We can probably take him down. Let's go. Alrighty. It's raining. That's not good. They split their forces. Interesting. Okay, so let's see what the composition is. One range unit on this side. Oh, I didn't check if he had flaming shot or not. I mean, even if he does, it's not the best weather for it. So there's that. Infantry. Two generals. Over here. Two horse archers, two regular archers. Infantry. One general. Okay. So, I mean, the only cavalry that's going to charge in is on this side. We're going to actually first pull all our units together. Uh, maybe this is a better way to do so. Just going to put them here in the back real quick, nice and cozy, so I can line everything up the way I want it to. So, this thing comes here to block that cavalry from charging in. Uh, this is mainly going to be their archer shooting at us, and then their infantry is going to try to close, and we'll burn them at this gate here. Our siege weapon is going to focus down this group here. I think we'll take advantage of this little gap right here. Ooh, our, our siege weapons are pretty green as well, tier 2. Hmm. I'm not sure this is actually a safe maneuver. Well, there's really no good angles here either. Yeah, this might this might just have to do here. All right, we're gonna put our range units mainly on this side. I don't want my archers to exchange fires with their archers if we don't have to, so. It's better if we just let the enemy infantry charge, shoot them with our archers, tank the enemy infantry uh, archer with a unit here so he doesn't come close enough to mess with us. So while they're busy shooting them, something like this. And that should be good enough to kill off most of the infantry as they charge up. And the cavalry will get killed by the spikes, as well as the formation. Our cavalry will go distract people. As will our general. No dueling, though. Now, you got a pretty good ability, though. Below 20 health. Last ditch resistant. But are we really going to gamble on... Oh! Wait a minute, he gives this to everyone? Wow, okay. That's strong. Not gonna lie. Alright, we're gonna tank up the range damage as much as we can. Uh, I'm gonna hide my guy in the back and put the garrison guy in the front to light the fire. And then we're going to stack one of these guys here in case Sun Tzu charges in. Our elite unit will be off to the side, ready to engage when the time comes. It's not that fast, but I think we want him on this side. Well, I can just chill in the back, offer his foresight to see any hidden units. And just stay safe, man. Let's go. Alright, charge him out. See if we can get their attention, charge them out. Now, the longer we can stall them outside, the better it will be for us. Does not want to duel. Huang Gai wants to duel. Interesting. Let's see if we can get their attention here. I really want to kill these guys. Oh, fire arrow. Okay, that's fine. 
it's raining, it's actually going to reduce the effectiveness of their fire arrows, so that's good news for us. Oh, they have ready units routing. That was quick. Alright, Sun Tzu is coming after us. What's his speed? 96. We're 141. You're a little too slow for us. Goodbye. Alright, we pulled their general away. We're gonna charge out. If they're not gonna come towards us, we flank them. We're gonna hold this to the side. Alright, we're just firing, firing, firing. Flank. Counter charge. Counter charge. How does he slip through? Alright. Oh, what happened to our micro ring? We, we routed him that way. I don't know how he was able to touch us. We have more speed, don't we? That didn't make any sense. Alright, we got trucked here. Lost a lot of health. Uh, it's sad that Huang Gai got in. I don't really have a solution for this. I just gotta wait till our cavalry recovers. Rear charge this. Finish them off. Let our archer just buy some time here. Alright, we're just gonna go back in. It's fine. We'll let the garrison unit die. Finish that off. Alright, rear charge. All they can do is shoot at uh, Zhou Yu here because they clump in melee here. Oh no, we're killing ourselves on some of the traps that we laid. Forgot about that. Alright, let's kill Zhou Yu then. Might as well get Sun Tzu angry now. He does not have Unbreakable. Well, it's too late to light it up. Go get him. Alright, we can strengthen our units. Give... Actually, we'll give this unit the boost. And then ask them to charge. Alright, we don't want to kill Zhou Yu. Because he's unbreakable, so we want to kill him last. We want to get Sun Tzu routed first, if possible. Move him out. There we go, he's routing. Use your speed for something useful. There we go. Alright, don't kill him, don't kill him. Let him go. Now we kill him. Actually, let's clear this group first. They're still not dead. Oh, Huang Gai is also still not dead. Can we go take care of him? Elite infantry, come with me. Alright, we finally crashed their... Oh no! Who killed the towers? Killed them. Crap. Crap. Not what we wanted to see here. All right, come back. Uh, not good. That I can say. Try to shoot them. Send him over. Send him over. There we go. Let's ignore Joe you for a little bit. Come, come, come. Alright, those horse archers are no threat. Uh, he gets extra attack though. I mean, we can get this at the end. Let's try it out. Alright, they will try to kill him. Can we give him a boost? 
All right, they're coming in. Oh, they routed. Okay. So they can try to kill him. How's the duel going here? Stop firing. Well, I expect us to be losing, and then we'll activate this. Oh my god. Stop, guys. Stop. Joey's dead. Not yet. Work on it, please. <laughs> Here comes our rapid tiger infantry. Does he have a splash ability? He doesn't. Okay, so our troops not gonna die just by standing here next to the duel. We're we're good. Come on, hit us below twenty percent health. I want to see this. Oh my god! Rapid Tiger, show them what you got. Cavalry, leave, leave. Rapid Tiger, go. We're winning? Yeah, I think we're winning, actually. Oh no, the enemy cavalry is running away from the Rapid Tiger. Joey, where are you going? Go get him. We're at 10k health. 20% is what, 4k? I think we start around 20k health-ish, 4 or 5k. We're getting there. Just want to see it. But Honga isn't doing enough damage. Oh my god, we're gonna lose here. Pull him out. I'll pull him out the other way then. Both has running this way. Is he gonna get healed when we kill Huanga? I think he might. Still can't activate. We're at 5.5. Oh, we can now. Let's do it. Alright, so what happens now? I guess we just get all the bonuses. Yeah. 150 seconds. Extra 50% uh, damage. 65% damage resistant. Unbreakable. There we go. We got him. That was close. Oh, he got another heal. <laughs> Nightmare. Alright, everyone on him. Alright, strategist versus strategist. Let's go. See, is he not below 20% health? Like, is it just a mistake that this is showing everyone? Like, he clearly... Oh, he's not. He's 5.4. Alright, maybe we'll go lose all our health. See, Joey got a nice damage boost, which actually helps him a little because he has a nice weapon. Got both Fallen Friend and Fallen Othorn. Yep. Ugh. I'm right, just going to have to spam click. No, his, his last ditch efforts ran out. We're not going to send him here. Look at our rapid tiger infantry. We have a silver weapon too. So we, we hurt. But we, we also get hit quite hard. Oh, we're here. Let's give it to this unit here. Go fight. I'm waiting to activate this. It seems like he's actually the one taking the damage. Come on, hit us, hit us. Oh, he's not hitting us. We're hitting him. He's killing units. Alright, fight us. Oh, we're not even hitting him. We oh, there we go.
He died. Finally. Unbreakable Zhou Yu. Alright, pretty rough fight here, actually. Alrighty. Let's see if we capture any of them. Or get even their silver weapons. That'd be nice. Nothing. Uh, we'll take income. Alright. So, the Yuan brothers have peaced out. Yuan Shu ponders the future. The land is in turmoil. You stand above it all, looking down upon the people. You have strong armies, powerful warriors, and resources aplenty. Perhaps now will be the time to declare your intentions of emperorship to the entire world. So we get legitimacy and a bonus. Oh, a permanent bonus? Ooh. I mean, we would be wasting the legitimacy, but that permanent bonus right here looks really good. I think we go for it. Let the world know. All right. So we have an army behind us here. Uh, they're following us instead of taking land, which is their big mistake. We're going to go wipe that out. Um, over here, we have them on the run. We'll be following this up, wiping them out. Probably sending this army down uh, to chase after him. He seems to be... Huh. He's just chasing after us. I think the solution is we trade it again. And then we sail down and then go for the copper mine over here. Or maybe just recall ourselves and then summon the self over here. We have a lot of options. Um, but we're going to wrap up our episode right here. We have finally declared our intention to become Emperor. Which is probably going to hurt attitude a little bit. Yeah, everything softened a little bit. Um, but we're going to try to maintain a good relationship with the Obey. The old troll is now in the yellow. Maybe we have to pay them off again. Uh, or we can go to war. We have a spare army here doing nothing. So if they want to betray us, they better think twice. And uh, we'll be more than happy to go back to war with Dolmen so we can clean up all these high empire territories. But we're carving out some land down south. And we're looking like we're going to be wiping out Sun Tzu very quickly. Because he has two armies. One we just beat. And the other one is chasing uh, like wild goose chase. Like he's not actually going to be able to catch us. And we're just trading away territories. I'm going to summon them back and then just reroute them over here. Wipe out this army, have this army come down, wipe out the city, and then Sun Tzu is pretty much done. And then we just have to focus down Yan Bai Hu before anyone new would declare war on us. But currently, we are enjoying quite a peaceful time, despite telling the world that we want to be an emperor. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and see you guys next time. Bye!